it's very easy to get started in QuickBooks. QuickBooks will walk you through many of the first crucial steps to setting up your company file. From the No Company Open screen, choose Create a New Company. This is going to bring you to the interview process. Now, you can click the blue Express Start button to get signed up right away, but I'm going to click Advanced Setup because this is going to guide you step by step through the entire process of creating a company file. So let's click Advanced Setup, and the first thing that you need to put in is your company name. Now, this can be your company name, and then the legal name can be what's on your tax forms, such as if you use a DBA, which is a doing business as. In this case, our company is Two Trees Olive Oil. Now, here's where you'd put in your tax ID. So if you're a corporation, then you'll have a federal employer identification number. If your business is just you and you don't have anything official set up, then you're considered a sole proprietorship and your tax ID would be your social security number. You can put in as much or as little as you want here. The only thing that you need to know is that if it has a star next to it, it's a required field. So you'd have to put that in. Click the blue next button when you're all set. Here's where you add your industry. Now what this does is it tells QuickBooks what kind of business you have so QuickBooks can recommend some basic chart of accounts for you. Now we'll go over those later. And if you can scroll through the list and find something that fits your business, that's great. But if you can't, don't worry. At the very bottom of the screen, there's a general product-based business option and a general service-based business. In this case, I'm gonna click general product-based business because I'm an olive oil company and I do sell bottles of olive oil, which is a product. However, don't worry if you do both because there are some services that we're gonna set up such as tasting parties, so you'll still get the opportunity to set up your service. Click the blue next button when you've chosen your industry. Here's where you decide what kind of a company you are, such as a corporation or an S Corp or a sole proprietorship or a nonprofit. Now this is important because QuickBooks can file and fill out a lot of tax forms for you. And it's important that these are the right forms. So if you aren't sure what kind of a legal entity you are, you can consult with a lawyer or your accountant. In this case, I'm gonna select sole proprietorship. Click the blue next button. Now you can choose when your fiscal year starts. In this case, I'll choose the default of January, but if for some reason you need to choose a different date, you can choose it from the dropdown. Click the blue next button. Here's where you can put in a password for your QuickBooks company file. This means that it'll set up the administrator account as a user, and you'll be required to put in this password when you start QuickBooks. Now, you don't have to, and for this course, in case I close and open up QuickBooks later, I'm not going to, but it's definitely strongly recommended that you password protect your QuickBooks file. To not use a password, which again is not recommended, you can just leave this blank and click the blue next button. We are going to be going over how to set up users in a later video, so don't worry about that either. Now it's time to actually create the physical QuickBooks company file. Let's click Next and we'll be prompted where we want to save the file and what we want to call it. I'm going to save it to my desktop, although this is a browse dialog box, so you could use the pull down menu and choose somewhere else to save it. You can also change the file name. It's going to default to the name of your company. You could change it if you wanted to. When you're ready, click Save and QuickBooks is gonna make your company file. You'll see that it doesn't take long at all. So now you need to answer some basic questions about your business so that QuickBooks can create a nice home screen so that you don't look at anything that you don't wanna use. I'll click the blue next button. So now it's asking what you sell, such as products, which are physical, tangible things, or services like lawn mowing and consulting. In this case, we provide both services and products. Click the blue next button. Here's a simple yes or no, whether you charge sales tax for your products. And also, do you create estimates? If you don't create estimates and you don't even wanna look at that option on your home screen, you could just choose no. In this case, I'll choose yes. It also asks you if you choose billing statements, which is quarterly or optional statements that you wanna to send to your clients. I'm gonna go over how to do statements in a later chapter, so I'll choose yes. Click the blue next button. And again, you choose whether you use progress invoicing. Progress invoicing can be very useful, so I'm gonna turn this on so I can show you in a later video. Also, do you keep track of bills in QuickBooks, such as bills that you pay vendors? Click Next. I'm gonna turn on tracking inventory in QuickBooks because I wanna show you how to do it when we start setting up our items. Click Next. Also, do you wanna track time? So tracking time can help you bill customers for how long you spend on certain projects. It can also help you pay any hourly employees. So I'll turn on time tracking. Click Next. 
do you have employees? Now I'm going to be showing you how to set up employees, so I'll say yes. I have W-2 employees, and I also have contractors that I'll be sending 1099 forms to. I'll be going over all of that in later videos. Click Next. Now, here's where we're going to set up our chart of accounts. These are all our accounts that contain our income accounts, expenses accounts, and other things that let us know where we're getting our income from and where our outgoing money is going towards. Click Next. And here's where we start choosing a date to track your finances. Now, this is a very important date because once you enter the start date for a company, QuickBooks doesn't want you to be able to change it. Now, this is an arbitrary date that simply exists so that you can line it up with your opening balances for all your accounts. That's what's really important. Your transactions start being line itemed as of the date you tell QuickBooks you're in business. Anything before that is considered having an existing balance. So you'll need to know what those balances are. For example, if you've been doing business for a while and you already have a business bank account, then you need to know what that current balance is for the bank account as of the date that you say your company's starting. You'll also need to be aware of what and how many open invoices you may have already been sending to your customers. Maybe you created those invoices using a word processing document and you've been doing it manually up until now. It's important to note all the opening balances for your customers and bank accounts. So in this case, you could choose the beginning of the year, but you could put in your own date. I'll click this button and I'm going to say that my business has been in business since August 8th. Click Next. And here's where we can review some income and expense accounts. Now, these are ones that QuickBooks has already set up for us based on what we said our industry was. You don't have to use any of the ones that it's selected. In fact, if you don't want to resale items, you can uncheck this and you can add more. For example, if you have business licenses and permits as business expenses, you can place a checkbox next to this. So you can scroll through this list and decide what you want as an expense account or as an income account. For example, if I print flyers a lot for my customers, such as brochures, I might want to add this account, this printing and reproduction account, as an expense account. So when I line item that expense from my business bank account, I can match it up to a printing and reproduction expense. So take some time, go through, choose some accounts, and when you're all done, click the blue next button. It's very important to note that none of these expense accounts are written in stone. You can hide them, make them inactive, and add more at any time. So now that we're all done, let's click the blue go to setup button, and we'll be continuing with creating our accounts. So we've got a company file, it will bring you to the screen, but I'm going to show you that you can just close out of this and start using QuickBooks right away. Let's click the X in the very top right hand side to close out of the QuickBooks setup screen. We're brought to that home screen I showed you in a previous video. I can see up at the top we're in our Two Trees Olive Oil Company, and now we're all set up and ready to go. So in later videos, I'm going to show you how to add all those accounts that it wanted you to set up, such as a bank account, chart of accounts, and adding inventory items. So let's get started with those.